minute because this stuff is fascinating to me. All right. <clears throat> well, we're still on our second playthrough. Uh, I, I think this is the time to geek for, for stuff. Cool. We are live now. Okay. Hello. 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 Time to geek and ends. Time for watching geeky stuff at the yeah. beginning. No more geeking. <laughs> we have to be completely serious now. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have to be completely serious about these fuzzballs that get into very silly romantic shenanigans. With a touch I of magic. I do love shenanigans. You are the living embodiment of shenaniganery. Thank you! So last we left off, we were stuck inside of uh, Sep's Sep, Sep's mindscape, <laughs> mind palace, the mindscape, the mindscape, the mindscape. Okay, your silhouette manifested against the lattice, commanding an absolute silence in the street below. Not even the burly fallow deer, expecting her by the pergola, could escape the overwhelming pressure of her apparition. This quietude wasn't meant to last, however. What a strange vision! I see a sun in the night! No! Oh, yeah, the Foolish mask. Foolish me, it must be the one they call Joseph, blessing me with her light! That barely managed to keep herself from smirking at the sight of ridiculous mask, sitting on top of her nightly visitor's enormous snout. In his mind, this was surely the first time this conversation had taken place, but Sep had memorized all the steps at this point. She had rehearsed her show, sold the tickets, and won the crowd a dozen times over. I am the one they call Joseph indeed. And you? What words should I use for a masked madman screaming in the middle of the night? Madman will suffice. For I have indeed lost my wits and my mind. I saw you dancing among flames today, and with every move I felt a forbidden passion setting my heart ablaze. I fear your lovely image has seared into my eyes for all eternity. I have therefore come to announce myself as your most fervent servant and admirer. Fervent my servant. My sword shall greet the throat <laughs> of any man that attempts to claim your affections for himself, Princess Jasif. Elbar's new fit of courtly poetry became a dissonant echo as Sep took both hands to her face. <sighs> I'm going to choke that woman in her sleep. <laughs> Thought disappeared as soon as arrived, unheard by anyone except Adder, who mentally patted Sep's shoulder. <laughs> so may I have a lock of red hair to remember our affair. You can have my whole tail if it'll make you shut up. Sep's words slipped from her mouth before she could catch them. The world froze for a moment as her suitor stood agape. With a single misstep, she found herself nearly falling to the ground and alone in uncharted territory. The music went on even though she had lost her tempo. But, but, babe, I wrote this myself! I even <laughs> had one of my guards follow you to find out which balcony led to your room. Also, my words could reach you. I wanted to pay you a nightly visit. Isn't that romantic? <laughs> Dozens of disembodied paragraphs scuttered through Adder's skull and stopped by his mint. Sep mentally went over all the nightly romance books in her library in a panic, just desperately hoping to find the right cue to jump back into their little dance. Ha! You dare speak of romance after exposing your intention to trespass? Sneaking under my window only to make your way into my bed is awfully inept of one that claims to serve me. You may as well just be a common thief. But how can I be a thief when you have stolen my heart? Do not doubt my word, Jasif. I am no lowly horn eater. My desires are lacking in lust. It is love I have come to give you. Desires are lacking in lust because uh, he's not into ladies. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, Rick, obviously, he's so extremely straight. I mean, who could ever question the, the, the heterosexuality of this gentleman? Is that so? Then leave. 
Leave at once, and do not come back until you bring proof that you do not wish to steal my affection. A quest? For your favor! Yes, I shall go and prove my... Yeah, yeah, good night. <laughs> the mass deer smirked as he held onto his sword, running off to conquer hearts, or whatever it is the captain of the guard does in his spare time. Sep couldn't have cared any less if she had tried the, at that precise moment. <laughs> well, butter my backside and call me a biscuit, Sep. You weren't kidding when you <laughs> said you got a wrap around your little finger. I'm almost glad to see I wasn't the only one you played with tales of knights and princesses. <laughs> <laughs> almost. <laughs> oh. Almost. It's okay, Adder. He's really, really not the the competition that you think he is. <laughs> Sep was about um, to lock the window when her eyes caught a glimpse of what looked like a pile of hay attempting to walk away. Uh, that's what I get for talking. First you eavesdrop on my past, and now you spy on my present. Why, Adder, perhaps you should be the one reading my fortune. Hey, now! That's a load of radish stew! I wasn't listening in! Nope! No, ma'am! My pa taught me better than that! I, I, I was just taking a stroll around the district and, uh... Ha! Huh. Looking for a place to spend your rivets? <laughs> and here I thought you were the type to take matters into his own hands. Oh. Tap's words took a moment to sink in. Pass at her, pointed at the gazelle, and puffed his cheeks up, failing to grasp a proper use of language to reply to her accusation. You better okay, stop with, that if you don't want me I to show you what I can the, do with these hands! Oh. The adder redesign of giving him the cloak and stuff, it is so much easier to tell which adder is which now. Yes. Hmm. Yes. This is very true. I remember that being a problem last time we played this scene through, and we were just like, wait, oh. what's going on? Where is he? I don't understand. <laughs> right, I forgot about that. I didn't even know who oh, didn't I forget like Jonas. That. I mean it in the bad way. Like, like I'm going to whoop your ass if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get a moment to think this through? Adder would remember the sheer third-person pain of this out-of-body experience and replay it in its nightmares for the rest of his lifetime and part of the next. Sep was rather gracious about it in retrospective. I get the distant feeling you are mad at me. Mad? Mad? I am mad! I'm hungry, and bruised, and dizzy, and my head hurts, and I got lost a couple of times, and I'm starving, but I ain't mad, all right? So listen up and listen well, because I got something to tell you. I'm listening. Sheesh. You! You got me pegged all wrong, you hear? I ain't in the business of eating horns. Never been and never will be. And I don't care how pretty you think you are. Even if I liked you, you can't just go around stealing kisses like it was no big deal. That ain't right, ma'am. Oh, but I haven't stolen anything. I fully intend to pay for that kiss, handsome. What the hell is that supposed to mean? You seen a price tag on my face? A buy two kisses to get Adder's interest-free installment plan? Now you're just being melodramatic. Literally everybody who comes to your balcony is being melodramatic, so... I don't know what that word it's means! I don't even know why I'm telling you any of this! I just wanted to prove to myself I was smart enough to stay put all night without thinking of calling you once. But then I heard that dumbass hollering down your window and, and I got so worried that... So worried that you hid behind a corner and waited until he left? <laughs> That's helpful. Darn right I hid! You see the size of that sword on his belt? You look just fine up there, but I would have lost my neck if I butted in. Sep's eyebrows rose slowly as she let her head fall on her hand. <sighs> Did you lose your backbone when you fell from the bridge? Excuse you, ma'am. I'm double backbone. Triple backbone, even. But I'm telling you, I could have died for nothing, and you don't even flinch. You really, really just don't... <sighs> you know what? This ain't worth it. I'm going home. Wait! You can't just leave like that. I, I still have to pay you back. Adder halted mid-step. He threw his shoulders back and forth as the silence grew thicker in the, in the street. I, I may not be all that smart, ma'am, but I've learned. Oh, I'd say I've learned a lesson or two on how to keep my head on my shoulders since I came to this city. And I can tell right away, you ain't the type to return favors. Oh, I don't know what do you see for a sap or a plain old Zelda ever want from me, but you're going to have to find yourself another buck to laugh at tonight. 
Is that so? Fine then. If you see the one-eyed chub I was waiting for on the way back home, wish him luck figuring out how to read gazes all on his own. You ain't got nothing to worry about, ma'am. He'll just have to do without magic as usual. I hope he can do without food, too, because I'm going to throw away the desserts I ordered for him. Uh, that's a... Mm -hmm. No. Nah. Yeah? Uh, for real? No, it's a bluff! You're bluffing! Am I? Oh, here goes this cake! <laughs> Both adders watched intently as Sep unlocked the window and slid it an arm slowly through it. She opened her whole hand, save for two fingers, letting a tiny square pastry dangle out the mashribia. Mashrabia. It could be mashrabia or mashrabia. Maybe like mashrabia, I don't know. Mashrabia. I have no idea what it is. But it was not any any pastry. Oh no. Adder nearly drowned on his saliva as he stared at the beautiful puff pastry filled with fig marmalade, covered with a generous layer of nuts slathered in honey and topped with a beautiful plump date cut to resemble a flower with an almond in its center. Also, so did we hear that stretch noise? <laughs> it was probably worth more than Adder's total lifelong earnings. It was the kind of pastry kingdoms fell and were built for. It was a honey dental cavity waiting to happen. Catch. <laughs> the pastry seemed to float briefly in the air as Sep let go of it. Adder hurtled himself toward the divine gift that was being offered to him and cushioned its fall, thanking the gods for his colossal pastry-catching hands. He didn't so much as eat the bribe as inhale it, believing himself unworthy of presenting <laughs> such a treat upon his taste buds. <laughs> the discovery of this new order on the scale of flavor could have been classified as a religious experience for a boy that had been feeding exclusively on a tiny stale potatoes for a year, and mostly oats before that. I... <laughs> I think I'm falling in love, man. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't fall on your face again on the way up. There's surely more banter to be appreciated as a newly bought buck dashed almost vertically up a column. It was, after all, the beginning of a relationship based on... Upon pastries, quick wits, and un uninhibiting wine. But Adder couldn't hear a word through his wailing. Sip! Sip, can, can you hear me? Oh, please, Sip, just one! Just let me eat one of those, I beg you! What kind of messed up torture is this? <laughs> you knew what, what you were getting into. What are you doing? The smugly complacent image of past Sep had been replaced by a smugly annoyed present Sep. Feeling sorry for myself? I, I thought it's what you were trying to- <sighs> For the last time, I wasn't trying anything! I already told you what to do. You just need to use your powers to sort through my emotions and find the relevant memories. Did you intend to sit here and watch the whole season go by until you stumbled upon something important? What? <laughs> no, not at all. Come on, Sip. I ain't that dumb. That's that's just what it looks like from the outside. Yep. But uh, I'm open to ideas if you got them. Volcano about to erupt would have looked far more benevolent than Sep at that moment. Please tell me what to do, ma'am. This is too weird for me. I'd say I can't believe this, but then again, it's my fault for putting so much trust in a poor excuse for an apprentice such as yourself. Say what? Think you got that backwards, Missy? You were a poor excuse for a teacher. Every time I asked you to let me read you, you just looked away, said some weird riddle, and told me to think about it later when we were done with everything else. <laughs> a good teacher makes oh, sure know, to only share as much information things. as their student can handle, and a good student is yeah, supposed to you know, um, learn more than they're taught. You things. should have done your homework and practiced on other people. And how was I supposed to do that? I spent moons trying to read my friend's gazes, but it was like, like I was all out of fire, you know? It, it was darker than before when I tried to look inside him. I couldn't see nothing at all. Even my boss looked colder than ever. But... After you showed up, I I stopped feeling like that. When I felt your warmth and, and I saw you smiling and, and talking to me, I, I don't know, something changed inside me. I felt like you'd lit my oil lamp again. Don't think I didn't notice. All right, that's it. If you're going to be a smart ass and twist all my words to make me sound like I'm Randy as a trote, you can go find the way out of your head all on your own. Oh, of course. It's me misunderstanding are, you. Are troats Randy? Is that a thing? 
Mm. Don't ask me. I just work here. Well, you couldn't say Randy has a goat because you know goats are people <laughs> here. <laughs> goats are people too. I mean, Randy go goat. Hey, keep that Randy sarcasm where I can see it. Well, I googled what a chart is, and now I wish I hadn't. Hold on, let me. Oh, okay. How do you spell that again? Yeah. Uh, throw it without the H. Oh. Huh. Okay. <laughs> wait, wait. You know what? This, it makes there's sense another... that that's Randy now. Come on. Let's... That makes okay, sense but... that you would call it Randy. But, on, okay, let's... but listen. Uh, Trot is also defined, according to this, as the cry of a buck in rutting time. <laughs> that's, that's what I was referring to. Thank you for spelling it out. Okay, because I also found that it was a type of fish. I wasn't sure which one. You... No, I, well, yes, but. <laughs> I've Shut never up. heard this before. <laughs> I don't know if I should. And where would that be? Had her open and closed his mouth wordlessly a few times before turning around and marching away from the desert rose. Wandering aimlessly around the desert in angry haste seemed like a good idea until it was obvious it was not. Quick glance back revealed a rather amused Sep waiting expectantly for Adder's unavoidable concession. So where were we before you did the thing where you try to embarrass me so I'll stop talking about a thing you don't want to talk about? Something, something, we're going to wind up dead if you don't teach me right? Fine, I'll be lenient and take my share of the blame. I tried to teach you to read gazes in the same way Mom taught me how to do so when I was a fawn, but it's evident that I was already leagues ahead of you back then. Yeah, yeah, I'm a dumbass and a thick skull and I'm lanky and this is the closest my family's ever gotten to read. See, I ain't arguing or anything. Can we move on with the lesson now? Deb stopped wa walking for all reply. Adder mimicked her, secretly congratulating himself for winning the argument somehow. Ignoring her traveling companion silent and rejoicing, Sepp stared at the ground until a cushion sprouted from it, fully formed and fluffy. Adder waited Fluffy. his turn eagerly, but she didn't extend the favor to him, lest resting his butt on anything other than sand would weaken his resolve. Tell me, Adder, do you know why us gaze readers have survived so long? Why no one knows our names when our power is so unbelievably useful? Oh man, more riddles? Ugh. I don't know, ma'am. I figure either you're good at keeping secrets or you end up getting torched every other week like the merchant. Close, but not quite. You are correct in one assumption, however. If a Barhan fortune teller was to say exactly what they heard inside someone else's mind, they'd be thrown into the pyre without any further questions. It's nothing quite as simple as that, no. There's a bigger reason why we, of all Sefi, have escaped pursuit. Even with our powers being so versatile and obvious, we are not infallible, nor irreplaceable. We weren't born to announce great prophecies or change fates. There was a brief pause. The gazelle harumphed solemnly, trying to signal that silence was out of the question. All right, Teach. Uh, what do we do with the stuff we find out if we can't say it, or change it, or do nothing about it? Our job consists of weaving histories, Adder. We take the broken bits and pieces that make up a past and tie them together to form a present. We learn and advise, for understanding the past is the closest anyone can get to predicting the future. These are our fortunes. So we're alive because we're a bunch of scammers making up tall tales. <laughs> Got it. Mind if we skip to the important bits now? Ugh! How can you be so bad at this? You're supposed to expand your mind, understand the heft and malleability of your abilities in shaping someone else's fortune, and realize how liberating the lack of your own preset destiny is! You still speaking, Sirnar? <laughs> <laughs> that made a noise that Adder could possibly describe, but that managed to transmit without delay the feeling of getting cussed out in another language. <laughs> Look, ma'am, I don't mean no offense, but we're just wasting time or whatever it is you waste here. I just gotta know how to use my eye magic thing to spot your weaknesses. Nothing else. You can't! That's not what this power does. 
All you can do is follow a current of emotion through the Hatsa, watching the many memories it ties together until you reach its logical conclusion. There's a shared source for all of them. Okay, yeah, so how do I do that? <laughs> I don't know, but it's not that hard, damn it. Think of the emotion you want to capture and then follow it. Spin the threads, sail the current, pull the carrots out, or whatever it is that you farmers do. Just picture what you want. I think the metaphors just don't cut it for me. Maybe it's because I'm dense, but I've always been the kind of buck that learns better watching someone else do things first. Riddle me this. What do you imagine when you're trying to find your way through this stuff? Zeppelin completely taken aback at the question. Her eyes shifted nervously from place to place until she realized that there was literally nothing else to look at in the desert but the boy in front of her. It's a diary, okay? I know what you're going to say. Talking to myself is weird. Well, screw that. I've spent most of my life alone. Besides, I've been writing since I was a child. Do you know how hard it is to give up that kind of... You don't have a clue what a diary is, do you? Adder shook his head awkwardly. He felt almost bad seeing how pointlessly flustered she had gotten. After a few moments of contemplation, Sep turned her face down, set toward her lap. She opened her hands with her palms turned up, watching them intently as dust began to gather in the shape of a rather unassuming worn-out book. It was the same one he'd seen in her room. A diary is like a friend in a book. Uh, <clears throat> it's a place where you write down all of your memories. So when I'm feeling nostalgic, be it in the real world or here, I just open my diary, think of what kind of memory I want to see, look for an entry, and... Sounds easy, that should do. Adder snatched a book from Sep's hands, casually turning it and flipping the pages as he tried to figure out how to use the book. Hey! Return my diary to me at once! It's private! Come on, Sep, you know me. Literacy is the name of a soup where I come from. I just want to take a quick look at this diary thing and see if I can find anything to- There's nothing for you in there! Give it back! I said, give it back! Step tug at the book with a strength that she couldn't have possibly had in the real world. Adder instinctively pulled back, afraid that either the book or Sep would get hurt if he let go. They both grappled with the book, pushing it back and forth until it finally slipped away from Adder's clumsy hands, floating moment uh, momentaneously open over the two. Adder dashed toward the book, throwing himself to the ground to catch it. Sep didn't wait for it to fall, using Adder's hands as a trampoline to jump and grab the book before it plummeted. Don't you dare touch my things ever again! She clutched the book against her chest, far angry and more embarrassed yet than she meant to let on. Adder was uh, blowing on the surprisingly painful step marks when she le that she left when he noticed something falling from the sky, a little piece of paper. It landed carefully on Adder's hands of all places, as if inviting him to look at it. Uh, Sam, wait, you forgot a- The ground before Adder began trembling as a small dust storm gathered around the page. Walls began rising, raising from the ground as a new room came as a new room emerged, forcing them both to move back towards each other. What page was that? What did you- Honey, please, let me in. Ah, go away! No! Oh, Sep, I'm so sorry I scared you. I'm- I'm not mad, see? You didn't make me mad, I just- got a tad upset because I was trying to have an important conversation with Dad while you kept tugging at my sleeve and I... I lost my temper. I didn't mean to yell at you like that. <sighs> I'm sorry, dear. I... I really am. It's not your fault this is happening. Gazelle Fawn stepped away from the door, letting the doe walk in at last. That's okay. We all make mistakes. As long as you understand. Step took Zara's hand and patted it softly like an old woman would. <laughs> Where did you learn that? Tree Dad says it. <laughs> he talks funny. Illagrab is not your dad, sweetheart. Nah, you're not my mom too. But that's okay. I like you more than my old mom. She never said sorry to me. <gasps> I'll make you a present for being a good mom. Tiny Gazelle turned away from Zara and began scampering around the room, looking for the perfect cushion to plop down on. She produced a piece of charcoal from the sleeves of her dress and a crumpled piece of paper and began doodling on it. Or at least, that's what Zara thought at first. She soon realized that the lines set was drawing on the paper were far more elaborate than mere scribbles. Did Illagrab teach you how to write, too? Mm, no. Big Bro teach me. He says I have to do his homework to pay for the room or he'll kick me out. But he doesn't know that I like it. 
Sorry I didn't even have time to react to this revelation, as the pe piece of sooty paper was shoved straight into her snout. For you! It says, I like Mom a lot, so you don't forget and get angry again. Zara stood at, uh, stared at the piece of paper, flummoxed. Then at Sap, who was looking back at her expectantly and turned. And then she gave Sep the strongest hug she'd ever given anyone. It was, perhaps, the first hug the Fawn had ever known. Zara let go of her all of a sudden, prompting a quizzical look from her child. I have just the perfect gift for you! Wait right here! The image of a happy mother dashing out of the room dissolved into heavy clouds of dust. The gazelle that remained after the sand dissipated looked entirely too meek and gaunt to be the Sep Adder knew. I I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to do that. Adder bent down, picked the piece of paper. Uh, picked the piece of paper and handed it back to Sep. She pushed the whole diary into his hands instead. Keep that stupid thing. It's obvious that you can make my diary work just as well as I can. No way! I can't even read it! How am I supposed to... Uh, huh? Uh, wait, I, I love Mom? Are, are these words? What's going on? <gasps> Hold up. Don't tell me I'm a natural word reader. Of course not. Text stops making any sense inside people's minds for some reason. The writing here doesn't make any sense either. It just says what I know it should say. It wouldn't be too far-fetched to assume that once you've seen the memory attached to the entry, you know, too. Whoa! Oh, you're right! This ain't the only page with words! Let me see, let me see! I can read the ones I saw before and... Hey, I think I know this one-eyed chub you're talking about here. <laughs> Fantastic. Have fun stripping me of the last readout of privacy I had left in my life. Hey, Sep, look at me. I I won't do nothing like that, okay? I promise I'll only read what I need to find a way out and give it back as soon as I'm done. There's no need. It's not the real one. The flick of her wrist, the book burst into an innocuous flames with it within Adder's hands. The smoke and the ashes all vanished into the air within seconds. Zep looked at... Was <laughs> Go on. Zep looked at Adder's hand, focused, and made a new one appear exactly where the previous one was. Nothing is real here. Zep vanished without another word, and soon the rest of the world followed after. The diary remained unaffected by the darkness that extended in all directions, however, as if inviting Adder to get lost in its contents. Something told him that the moment he turned a page, there would be no turning back. Hey, gotta save. Sap. <laughs> Fine, save. Don't know why we need to, but... <laughs> because reasons. Um, note from Maxi. Our sophists, me, are working tirelessly every day to ensure that the diary works like a charm. In the off chance you found any bugs, no, you didn't. But if you super did, please contact <laughs> me through my support email through Steam before review bombing. Thank you. <laughs> You're about to take a deep dive into the darkest corner of Sep's minds where she doesn't dare step. You'll have to venture forward, trusting your instinct and her occasional advice to advance through the maze. It's impossible to tell what you may witness from here on. As an ad precaution, however, you have a show content warnings button at your disposals. Uh, we don't mind content warnings, so. <laughs> yeah. We good. Yeah. 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 I really as like that doodle it... of a adder reading there <laughs> from the right, by the way. That is, uh, that is real good. <laughs> He's, he's like nerdy. Yeah, imagine he literally is reading this entire book, holding it like that as well, and he just <laughs> thinks that's how books work. Yeah. Gotta make sense of these funny symbols. Reveal your secrets. Anyway, go on. Dear diary, oh, if anyone what? other than me is reading this, please burst into flames and kill them. <laughs> oh, what does that adder remind me of? What is that really old anime of, like, the, the, the family? Oh, Are you thinking um, of Shin-chan? Yeah. Maybe? That's what I'm thinking about. Yes. By the way, Rick, if, <laughs> if you that black circle with the little white dot in the center, yes. If you need <laughs> a are. break and you want us to read some of these, just let us know. <laughs> it's up to you. Nope, Rick has to do them all. Okay, I have there. to do them all. <laughs> Very well. <laughs> That's the law. No. The law. The world. Okay. 
Good lord. Your diary, mom says you are mine now, and C said you are a friend in a book, and I can tell you things when C is busy, and I can tell her you are like Yaf and tell it, but not dumb. <laughs> okay. Honey, please, let me in. Ah, go away! No! Oh, Sep, I'm so sorry I scared you. I'm... I'm not mad. See? You didn't make so me mad. This is also why I the diary is a thing, is because Sep, at an early age, associated writing with happy Dad feelings. Well, you kept tugging at my sleeve, and I... I lost my temper. I didn't mean to yell at you like that. I'm sorry, dear. I... I really am. It's not your fault this is happening. You know, That's can... okay. We all make mistakes. Yeah, I am. <laughs> Three dads. Illagrab is... Nah, you're not... Did Illagrab... No. For you, it's... I have just the... Hey, Sip, so, uh, I've been thinking real hard about that thing I said about being responsible and whatnot, so I, uh, who boy, I, I think I'm ready to take this step. Ma'am, will you be my wife? <laughs> Even the train is getting excited at this scene. <laughs> the train's like, yes, I ship it! <laughs> <laughs> Sep nearly spit her whole drink on Adder's face. What? <coughs> what? Are you seriously asking me to marry you? Look, I know it's sudden and it's weird and my parents will never look at me the same, but it's the right thing to do. And I don't want my fawns growing up without a father. F fawns? What? Whatever gave you the idea that I'm expecting? We... You know. You know. Or maybe you don't know. Please tell me someone told you about this! D -d Hold up. Maybe gazelles <laughs> just don't make fawns like we do. See, when a deer and a doe love each other very much... <laughs> <laughs> hey, Sep, quit acting like a fawn! This is important! Come on, does it look like I'm telling a joke here? And in Ralph's face. This wouldn't take him any further. I'm going to make some notes here so I don't keep writing, going over the same thought threads. Good call. Wait, are you telling me you're making a diary diary? Yeah, you know, so that you can... So, 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 so. Dear diary, oh, mom telling me today that she's a Dao and I am a gazelle, but we are family and I say now, but she said the rest don't now, so they're dumb and I agree. Technically, 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 technically. Adder, adder, adder. No, no, I refuse. No matter how you insist. It doesn't work like that, Mom. You have to pick one. Why? Can't I love all my children equally? It's not no. love, it's law. Illigrip says that it's the parents' duty to choose one child to favor as the heir of their estates to prevent a divation of power and in fighting among their... I need to have a word with Mr. Buntalos about his idea of age-appropriate lessons. He... You know what? What does take Um, that means I can technically... Technically. <laughs> but I don't want to go... Technically, technically, technically. Well, technically... They started with a promising invitation and the massive nuisance that attending it would suppose for Sep. This was it, her first foray into the family business. Hitting the whims of some deer other than Miss Rochelle. Being paraded around town like a prize, feeling everyone stare on her and her patron. No, wait, she enjoyed that much. It was the questionable poetry that was killing her. Ah, Jasif! How have I longed to talk to you face to face like this? 
There's no greater distance than time, milady, when your company I lack. For if you were to travel beside me... A thousand leagues would seem a yard. Fancy that. You look fantastic uh, bitmapper, for being no, the game is years not old. Done, if done. it's true, you write your own words, Sir Askadath. Uh, chapter four still needs to come out, and I don't remember if there's a fifth chapter planned or not. I think four is the last one. I'll ask Maxie if, if he pops in, but okay. I think four is it. Ha! Discredited by a throwaway quote spoken in haste. Had I known I was in the presence of a fellow thespian connoisseur, I'd have found something more discreet to recite than a traveling troupe classic, like well willed words. Don't worry. I wouldn't know what's cliched and what's not. I'm not allowed to attend any performance outside the Desert Rose. Miss Rochelle insists that public theaters are not fit for royalty and that I should be content with reading books instead. That is absolute utter nonsense! Theater is an art! Had I been born under different circumstances, I would be touring the kingdom with my company! Not as a mere mummer, mind you, but as the most goddamn renowned actor in all of Akathor! Alas, my endless list of nobillery obligations takes far too much time for my nobillery. schedule as it is. But not enough to ever skip a play, big or small. I shall let that stewardess of yours know that she's an uncultured beast, if you do not do so first. Please don't. As much as I'd enjoy seeing you insult her, that'd be far too reckless of me. I shouldn't risk losing the only home I've known over a few laughs. What do you mean, just see? Why not? It's hilarious. Is the Desert Rose not your property? The last bastion, the remains of your kingdom. It's a long story. One filled with murder, treachery, and usurpations. Go on. I should indeed be the owner of the Desert Rose by family right, but Mom, <clears throat> Mother, never named a legitimate successor. She probably never intended her business to outlive her, but she didn't intend to leave us as soon as she did either. When she died, everything turned to chaos. Some fled, thinking that we would tear each other's throats over the deed of ownership. Some left, trying to clear her murderer's name. I stayed, too young and too scared to know what would become of me. Someone had to take the reins of my house eventually. Miss Rochelle, my mother's oldest apprentice. She promised that she would only manage the Desert Rose while I was too young to do so myself. <laughs> But now I realize that a gazelle will never be old enough in a doe's eyes. My chance to rule and my chance to escape both disappeared a decade ago. And so I came to a tragic conclusion. I'd rather see my mother's legacy stolen than destroyed. And I'm afraid that I was part of the deal as well. Your words feel as swords sunk deep into my heart. And yet their painful steel shines with the promise of change in your luck. I see now the meeting you was far more than coincidence, Jaseef. It was fate! Yes! What else could it be? We are both exiles kept away from our legacy. Our reputations torn asunder by mistakes we made in our childhoods. You are not allowed to leave your palace, whereas I am not allowed to return to mine. But this shall not stand! If your evil stepmother has taken over your kingdom, I will find a way to restore it. And if your rightful mandate cannot be returned, I will found a new kingdom for you to rule. You know, it's and it's funny. When I was first when Elbar first entered this story, I really didn't like him. But the longer and more melodramatic his 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 speeches go on, <laughs> the more the more I find him endearing. <laughs> Elvar turned toward the tower that led to the royal pathway. Sep instinctively took a step back. Come now, don't lag behind. There is much to be discussed, my princess. And work with this. I can't reclaim what I want. I can work with this. 
current became more and more complex as Adder traveled down this path, a mix of mysterious emotions and torrential thoughts that would make little sense to him without further context. Memory's missing one. Yeah. Look at his portrait. He's blushing. Yeah, Wait, before we went into the last memory, he was he was uh, had a little weepy face. He's like kind of crying. And he's like, I'm finding some bushy stuff in here. He is experiencing all of Sep's emotions. They're basically her entire life. Really no rest for the wicked. Today was my first time accompanying Sir Ask Death as a hired escort. No, as Ral made sure to remark over and over, we were simply meant to get acquainted with, you, with each other at this point. In her words, move your lips, not your hips. Briefly Why not both? <laughs> Briefly considered dressing Elbar down to his antlers behind a gazebo just to spite her. But I soon found he was, true to his word, extremely uninterested in my proximity. I was sincerely surprised. I never would have taken such a massive and boisterous stag for the aloof type. Am I really expected to put some effort into seducing him? Perish the thought. I am positive that he will fall for my natural charm sooner or later. I'm not lacking lovers oh. to confer with if he so wishes to keep me waiting. Oh, Sep, I think you may have your work cut out for you <laughs> to seduce that one. <laughs> So as Rao would have it, I spent a long evening listening to my new patron talk and talk, and then talk some more. For Sir Askedath seems to forget that a conversation is composed of two people, not a succession of monologues. Once he managed to shut his snout for a whole minute, however, I found out that he was just as keen on listening to my woes as he was talking about his. My woes about Rao specifically. He's made his own ideas about her in his mind, and who am I to refute them? If he wants to rescue me and build a kingdom, let him. Noble deer certainly are something else. They belong on their own tier of stupidity. Well, regardless, it is reassuring to know that he and I will get along much, much better than expected. I can safely say that I am a little excited to see how long it takes him to crack under pressure. Ha. P.S. He tried giving me a tip for my company. A tip? Who does he take me for? Barmaid moonlighting as a harlot? I am not thankless enough to refuse his gifts, of course. Simply pointed out that a queen has no need for money. I'd much rather partake in pr presents that cannot be acquired with it. So he promised he would bring some more wine. Is this what they call incitement? <laughs> okay, let's try the other path. Go. I. Yo. Yeah, bud. Ding dang, walla walla, bing bang. <laughs> Vaughn jumped out of her bed, ignoring the sheets she was dragging behind her and the danger she posed on the carpets and bases that decorated her bedroom. Step valiantly ventured into the dark corridors where a child's nightmares always lured near. But she didn't fear them, no. All she needed to do was reach her mother's door. She'd be safe there. Mom! I saw- There was nothing at the other side of the door but an empty bed looking over a dusty moonlit chamber little girl observed the room from the threshold, afraid of stepping in. Until Amira told her that she wasn't a little girl anymore. So it didn't take him any further. Hmm. Is that the design of chat of, uh, is that also a little chubbier? This one? Yes, she did add some, or uh, Maxie did add some weight to uh, to Sep. He wanted her to be uh, a little bit thicker. Hope Geoff gets stabbed in his sleep. I hope he dies as he crawls back. Oh, honey, come on! You can't stay mad at your poor brother forever. He is no brother of mine. What would Thar say if she saw you two fighting like that? She can't say anything anymore, can she? Okay, that one goes to memories. He 
the guy came back last night. He's not really bad. Geoff says that he's here to return to me to my real parents because everybody hates me. I hit him. He hit me back. We hit each other a lot, and I got so angry that I grabbed his head and pulled his hair. Then I felt really strange inside, like my eyes were really sore. I don't know what I did, but Geoff was crying. He wouldn't let me see him, but it must have hurt a lot. Mom came when he heard, but a guy was with her, and he got really mad. He screamed at me and Mom, asking who I was and calling Mom names. I don't know what's happening. They left me up here all alone. They left me all alone up here. I can still hear them screaming in Mom's room. I'm scared. Mom? Mom? Ah! Mom! Once more, Adderfeld is mind being desperately dragged away from this memory as much as he tried to see what lay beyond that door. The smell of blood and smoke clung to his skin as everything went dark. So this is the one that we're trying to figure out what's behind it. Yeah. 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 Hey, Stoker. Yeah. Nope. You think this... All right, fine. Yes, Jonas. You think this game qualifies for that feel punk genre? You, you, you... Uh, it might. Just crossed my mind. Anyway. <laughs> A lot of words here. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know if AC Knight really has the same kind of like, oh, feels sort of tone well to it. Like, it's not that melancholic, and the characters are. Uh, far too snarky and competent. A point for the situation. It's just that I'm thinking about the the, the personal element. You know, this this year. I mean, you know, when you read this, it's like you know where this is coming from. Yeah, I get that. But anyway, go anyway. I don't. Know. Okay, now read this. Okay, I know it's been a while. I'm not trying to avoid you. I just have very little to tell. I spent most of the day dancing bastardized versions of the songs Mom used to teach me, and when I'm not dancing, I'm arguing with Raoul about the way she tries to change the songs even further. I've been trying to find someone to practice basketette with, but to no avail. None of the p few people who know it are willing to teach a child a language so powerful. Your diary, I had a nightmare today. I dreamt that a beast came for me and ate me, and how did I react? I called for Mom. I'm dying of shame just from telling you about it. Thank the gods no one heard me. Speaking of the divine, tomorrow is the big day. I'll become an adult in the eyes of the gods or some such pointless tribe by swearing my loyalty to the Akazor. As if. But those are the rules that have been set for me, are they not? I decided years ago that I would t walk to Hiram's statue on my right of age. I will look at it in its empty eyes and swear that I will find the power to do the things I need to do. To be the person I need to be. I've made it this far with my sanity intact. If that is not proof of my strength and my determination, I'm not sure what could ever be. It took me all of said strength and determination to not choke Ralph tonight after I saw the traditional Barhan dress she brought to celebrate my debut in society. It was not a dress. It was more like a quarter of a dress. She had the gall to spit on my history and then claim Mom had made it for me years ago. Does she think I'm an idiot? The mere insinuation that Mom would ever make me wear something quite so tasteless is revolting. Maybe that is what is giving me nightmares. Or perhaps it's just my mind t subtly telling me that I'd rather get eaten than go through this. Dear Diary, I have tried to fill this page over and over, but ink alone can't convey the feelings that move my hand right now. My right of passage came, and with it, Ral's obvious ploy to introduce me to what she calls... She refers to as the family business. I can't believe for one second Mom had anything to do with parading does around for deer to drool over, but arguing with that terrible woman is a pointless waste of time if I ever saw one. At first I was crawling out of my skin. With those clothes on and all the fire burning around me, I felt exposed and awful and trapped. You don't even have anything to be ashamed of up there, Ralph said, giving me a goddamn slap on the butt. I truly considered taking a co torch to her dress and running. But then a thought struck me. 
Had I not practiced this dance a thousand times, was I not blood of the mightiest people who ever danced with fire? I could quietly die of shame in a corner, unheard and ignored like any other gazelle these beasts had ever met, or I could burn for all to see, make them remember what they had just witnessed for the rest of eternity. They would not dare forget what they saw. And I was right. When the dance finished and I took the last steps to the center of the stage, they asked about me. They wanted to know my name, my story, my age, everything. And in a bout of inspiration, I proudly announced, I am Joseph, and you need not know more. The deer went quiet, and then they all stood up and began whistling and clapping like they had lost their minds. That was power, diary. The fire and the gazes and all the fine words I had been taught had nothing on this way I had over the most powerful men in heirloom as I danced. They were sweating as they watched, swearing over and over that they were not horn eaters as they looked for a way to approach <laughs> me in private and asked what my next show would be. I finally realized how foolish I was spending my nights hidden among books in my room hoping that someone would come and rescue me. I am not a little candle blowing in the wind. I am fire itself, hungry for everything. It is time to escape my confinements and see the wonders the city has been saving for me. Goodbye, diary. I have a date tonight. You go, girl. <laughs> you go. Okay, so... No. Oh, honey, come on. Whoa. Second one. Memory recorded from a low angle, or rather, that of a child looking up from her hiding spot behind a statue. She stared intently at the usual giant tree man, helped the most unusual red man off his back. Welcome to the Desert Rose, oh wise merchant. I hope the road has treated you well. I've been looking forward to meeting you personally. Illigrab has told me many stories about you. I always knew Illigrab was a Yalta, but to think he would mingle with actual strumpets. Red, come on. I'm not asking for so much. Ten minutes. Ten minutes acting like a civilized person in front of Thaw. You can stick your civilization where the sun doesn't shine! I was happy in the steps far away from all these senseless plots of yours! When will you get it in your head that I am retired? What Sep had mistaken for a furry statue of sorts moved all of a sudden. It swept Sep right off her feet with a soft kick, then grabbed her by her shirt before she touched the ground. The living statue proudly lifted its catch of the day up in the air for all to see. Oh, Ooh. there's a little slippery star! What did we say about sneaking around like that, Sep? No, I wasn't sneaking around! I was eavesdropping! Unhand me! Unhand me, I said! Mom! <laughs> Help! No, no, if you wanted to meet our guests, you should have come and done so properly. Mr. Red has come a long way to see you. What sort of impression are you going to leave on him if you don't behave? You misunderstand the purpose of my visit, woman. I haven't come here to see her. I have come here to be seen. <laughs> Following an unspoken order, the golem carried Sep a few steps closer to the merchant's face so she could take a good look at him. A moment of expectation ensued. All the attendants stood in solemn quietude as the young gazelle stared at her senior. What are you? Is your name really Red? <gasps> Is it cause you're Red? You look really old. Where are your eyes? And your horns? What happens to your teeth? Ugh. Your breath stinks. Are you done yet? Mm, yeah. No. What's any of it to you, you mannerless scamp? That mannerless scamp startled so badly that she managed to slip away from the living statue's grasp. She immediately ran to hide behind her mother, nothing short of terrified. Shh, sh it's all right, it's all right. I apologize, Mr. Red. She can be a little overwhelming when she gets excited. <laughs> Kids these days. In my day, we called that spoil. Ah. And the cure was a good smack on the head with the long side of a cane. Uh. Isn't that right, Aina? Aina? Her nose twitched slightly as if bothered by a certain smell. The faintest trace of emotion began forming on her mane as her snout wrinkled and her eyebrows rose. The look Aina had on her face when her eyes found Sep again was awfully casual. It wasn't all that different from the expression any mortal would wear upon re remembering they had forgotten to hang out their laundry for the last several centuries. The merchant's cane flew right into Aina's chest before whatever thought had passed her mind could take form, putting a sudden stop to both her approach and her expression. Commiserations for abducting the right child. We're done here. What? You're leaving so soon? I was hoping we could discuss... Uh, 
There is nothing left to discuss. Not until we have settled down, at least. Illagrab, is my old abode still free? You mean the Temple of Arab? It was expropriated centuries ago. I mean, sure, you could buy it again, but it's a miracle it hasn't fallen apart yet. No one has tended to it since my grandfather wilted away. Hmm. Perfect. I hate getting used to new houses. Come on, Ada. <laughs> we have a lot of stuff to carry back home. Yeah, yes. he is a great grandpa. <laughs> Anna stared at Sep a little longer before reluctantly following the merchant's footsteps. Is he always like that? Oh, no, not at all. He usually swears a little more. <laughs> <laughs> Lonely child wandered in the dark and narrow alleys of heirloom for the first time in her life. The rainy season left a misty fog that covered her escape, a welcome assistance as her hooves kept slipping in the wet mud, leaving a clear trail to follow. But again, who would ever look for her? She was alone. That's why she had left, searching for something. Someone. Anyone who would understand. At last, she found two gazelles gathered under a balcony, warming their hands Ooh. with half-extinguished fire hidden under some bricks. Sep took a deep breath and then a step. T-Tessakermat! Excuse me? Oh, did, did I pronounce it wrong? I'm so sorry. I haven't practiced my Basakted in years. Um, uh, here regard you. May we share the fire as siblings? Uh, you are welcome to sit down? If... That is what you're asking? Sep nodded, flustered, and then made space for herself on the ground between them. The two gazelles exchanged uncomfortable glances. So, uh, what brings you here, little one? Did you get lost on your way back from an errand? No, I just felt like doing this. I wanted to see what the city was like at night. Ah, so this is your first time outside after curfew. No wonder you're so nervous. Worry not, you have come to the right people. Listen, oh, yeah. the key to making it home in one piece is keeping your feet nimble and your fire low. Avoid the moonlight as much as you can. Deer can see better than us in the dark. Come on, that's just hearsay. Capitat it is. Guards always see you before you see them. And if one finds you, you have to play dumb. And I mean really, really dumb. They are paid in set to pass and would rather send you off on your way than waste time walking to the dungeon and back. By the way, if you fancy a drink before going back home, there are a few friendly taverns just around the corner. No one will say a thing if they see a gazelle walking in. Not like you'd need him. You look like a doe in that. What do you mean? My horns are right here. See? Don't mind him. He's just jealous because his masters are a cheap lot. Those are some really good hand-me-downs, though. What house do you work for? I don't work for anyone. Well, I mean, I kind of work in the desert, Rose, but not really. Ral isn't paying me yet because she says I'm still training and I have a lot to learn, and... The older gazelles looked at each other, horrified. We have to do something, right? This is like ten different kinds of illegal. Wait, we, we shouldn't just jump to conclusions. <laughs> hey, kid, can you, can you tell us what you're training for exactly? I'm supposed to be training to become a dancer. But, actually, what I'm really training for is... Becoming the next Jasif. I will restore our honor to what it once was. The next... <sighs> oh, my son! You should have said so sooner! To think that the Jasif would spend our precious time scampering through dark alleys and huddling around a doused fire with us mere servants. Don't encourage her, you Iskap! You are the only Iskap here! Bow your head and apologize, Nuth. Don't you feel ashamed for teaching our son Ooh. how to sneak like a street shrub on our first night outside, instead of showing her the proper path for a monarch? The proper path? You mean I shouldn't be here? Of course not! See that footbridge above us, my son? It's called the Royal Pathway, and it's a road reserved only for those of noble birth. And tell me, Jasif, who could be worthier of walking the skies than the daughter of the sun herself? Wait, kid! Don't listen to him, he's just... Yeah, how come no one ever told me about this? 
What am I doing wasting my time on the ground when I could be watching the city from up there? Right? Come with me then. I'll show you to the entrance. Oh. oh. You two seriously have nothing better to do tonight than to make fun of a kid? You know, I usually turn a blind eye on petty things such as barhand escapades after curfew, but incitement is a far more serious crime. Guards! Sir uh -oh. Fatalos, please! I, I, it was him and him alone. I was trying to stop him, I, I swear! You can play the blame game all you want in the dungeon. Take them both! What are you doing, Illigrab? Let them go! They're my friends! No, they're not. I heard the whole thing, Sep. They were just laughing at you. Wait, were you following me? How did you know I ran away from home? Who told you? That's not the matter at hand here. You are not allowed to go into the royal pathway under any circumstances ever again! Have I made myself clear? No! It's not fair, damn it! Mom always said that I would grow up to become the next Justine! You you called me Justine too when you left! Well, it's during the title! The Royal Pathway! I deserve to be up there! Mom wouldn't want it that. <sighs> Look, Sep. Thar was a lovely woman. I wouldn't hesitate to call her one of the best people I ever met. But she was a doe. Her kindness tinted her view so much that it obfuscated reality. This world looks nothing like she thought it did. At least not for you and I. But... That's not fair! Don't you get it? They should be listening to me. I am... I... I am Jessie! If the world doesn't look like it should, I have to make a change! I'm not doing it for me! I'm doing it for them! Why can't anyone understand that? I'll oh, check it here. The grab patted her head as softly as he could. There is someone who could. Man, this is going to be a complex one, isn't it? <laughs> it was pretty complex the last here. time we did this. Oh, by the way, Max, he's on his way. Oh, cool. Back to the long silence again. That one went to... Red man, which split like me. I'll find. Okay, let me read that. Dear diary, today I met another gazelle called Red and a beast called Ana, and they're mean. Mom says they're important and they'll help me, but I said no because Ana is a beast. But Mom said Ana is a golem. But I'm pretty sure it's a beast and it wants to eat me. I haven't seen Gioff, Gioff and Taylor's dad in a long time, but they're sad. I'm glad because he's mean too, but they can't know that. I think Sep's more correct than Thar was. <coughs> Could be. When Illigrab and Red visit, Mom locks the door and they won't let me hear what they're talking about and they talk in Basquetet, so I can't understand. They let me play with Aina while I wait. I don't think she wants to eat me now. Mom tells me to be careful, but it's like playing with a very big doll. I ask her many things, but she doesn't reply, but I can hear her snore when I tell her she's rude, so I know she listens to me. I have staring contests with her every time she visits. It makes my eyes hurt, but I'm going to get better at it until I win. I think Taylor is afraid of Ana. He looks scared when I'm playing with her. I've told him that she doesn't want to eat us, but he runs away when she looks at him. Ralph told me that he's in love and then told me to keep it a secret. I told Mom. Sorry. Today I asked Illigrav if the merchant is his husband because he's always screaming at him and he gave me a hug. 
thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for the subscription, Ichigo Tomago. Ah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. I tried to make Aina blink today, and I heard a voice. I looked around, but we were alone, so I asked her if she said something, and she looked at me, but she looked really scared. I told Mom, and she said I must have imagined it. He offered it, and he made fun of me and said I'm going crazy. I'm not crazy. He's crazy. Taylor likes Aina, too, and he wants her to live with us. Mom's going to buy her so I can have a friend here. Illagrab and the merchant come home a lot, but sometimes we visit the temple, too. There's a really pretty statue of hear of and we pray there. The merchant makes fun of my way of saying words in Baskatet. I hear Aina laughing too sometimes. Mom says that hear of made me but I don't know if that's true. She doesn't let me read her thoughts but I can still remember the face of my old father when I close my eyes. Maybe that wasn't my father after all. They could have found me just like Mom did. I think the statue looks like a girl. I like her horns. Little Spectre says, why am I now imagining Aina playing with Sep and why is it so cute? Yeah. That's weird. Why is to see this memory link on the first page instead of the last one? Right. Oh, okay, no. so nope. you go through what this one. And Red did not appear for some right. reason. <laughs> there you are. Is he Assuming I clicked through that too fast. Yep. We have more than enough money to keep another child. That's not the problem at hand, is it? No. The problem is that you've lost your damn mind! Where are her parents, Thar? Someone must be looking for her! Someone must be looking for all the other girls I've brought home too. But you don't understand. She's different. She... We'll have to put bells on you if you keep sneaking around like that, little pumpkin. <gasps> Tree Dad! How did you do that? It's a secret feet shuffling technique I was taught by an old friend. You ungulates are so used to clopping your hooves that a shifty walk goes completely over your heads. What's an angulate? How about I tell you over some tea and pastries, hmm? Zara and a guy uh, turned to look at the tree, smiling nicely towards them. They both cast their eyes down and hurried away from the courtyard. Illigrad, lure blocky. Oh. Mom? Mom? And that one returns to don't open that door. Adder felt a longer tremor than usual as the memory disappeared. A piece of the wall fell, followed by another and a dozen more. A thin breach formed in her defenses, casting a single sun ray into the darkness. It wasn't nearly big enough for his hands or his head, but that was, without a doubt, the way out of it, her heart that she had promised. He hadn't taken two steps toward it when he halted in place, paralyzed by a thought. Adam knew that if he walked out of here, Sep wouldn't let him inside again, ever. But was he truly ready to leave? Did he really know enough to face her? Uh, we've barely gone through anything, so... <laughs> nope, nope. Back into the, the horrible miasma of emotions that is <laughs> Sep's mind. Perhaps you fear giving Sep an incomplete answer. Perhaps you just want to take advantage of her trust. Be that as it may, Adder turned away from the breach and opened the diary once more. At least he would know where to go if he finally wished to leave. So that one went to different. Can't go face Ganon until I have all 12 memories. Exactly. <laughs> Barely even gone like to the ladder. What's the memory? Look at all these that we haven't looked at. I would be all sad. Yeah, is that really all that you need to do for this one? Okay, so... I'm sure there's a gulf between the minimum amount you can do and 
So, we need uh, you to get the uh, best I'm result. So no, don't, I don't. I'm. Don't you. The, oh, wait. You. You know. You. No. Man, these are some talented voice actors. How are they doing that? <laughs> we got advanced technology. Memory's missing one. <laughs> Stop! Don't open that door. Okay, that one I chose. Don't copy that floppy. <laughs> that appear anywhere? Yes, don't copy that floppy, folks. If you enjoy this game, please go check it out on Steam right now. <laughs> you wouldn't download a car, would you? I mean, I would, if I could. <laughs> Reprint or car copy. Oh, I, I, I'd pay for it still. You wouldn't download a car.com. <laughs> Your diary. All right, would you... How are you? Am I supposed to say that? It has been a whole eternity since the last time I wrote an entry, and I do not suppose this is bound to happen again anytime soon. Referring to a book in second person is quite the awkward thing to do, especially for the famously obscure Jasif, the eternal novelty of the Desert Rose. As Yes, as you can see, this is hardly the most pretentious thing I have done as of late. Guys, I really used to do this every day as a child. Anyway, you may be wondering why I'm writing now, of all times. I would be wondering, at least. I had to endure a rather tumultuous night, and I cannot sleep as much as I try. I really feel I need to get this off my chest and tell someone what happened, but I fear you made the closest thing I have to a confidant. This is getting more pathetic by the second, so I may as well just lean into it and explain from the beginning. I have a crush, diary. I think I do, and I think it is mutual, because every time I visit the Temple of Hirab, I find the same white-haired creature watching intently from afar. Their presence sends shivers down my spine, the good kind of shivers. Their long white hair is so graceful and ethereal, but their body is so chiseled, too. They look like they could snap an iron beam with their own hands. Oh, but what do I really, what I really love is the way they stare at me, so intense, so hungry, and I may have stayed a tad too long in the temple looking for my absent watcher. What? 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 I just... I don't, I don't remember there except making an admission that she was attracted to Aina. Well, I mean, this is, this I, I is very sorry. <laughs> eh, it might have been, it might have been real or temporary. It's hard to say. Far too late to risk walking home when the temple lies so close to the sums. I knew I would not hear the end of it if I disappeared two nights in a row. So I decided instead to take a completely different kind of risk. I snuck onto the royal pathway. I was crossing the stretch that goes right over Slander, and who do I see but the mysterious albino running after Geoff, no less. I needed to talk to them more than ever now. I thought we have so much in common. So there I was enjoying the show when I heard patrol coming my way. I tried to leave quietly as usual, knowing they aren't ever precisely in a hurry, when a ridiculously eager new recruit managed to sneak up on me. In a second, I was cornered against a railing, no chance to escape. I knew his partner well enough, awful old man. He gave me a choice that was truly not one. Humiliate myself to prove my identity or get dragged to the dungeon. In retrospective, that would have been the smart choice. I could have just walked in and told Illigrab what happened. But Pride would not have me in relying on old friends, so I tried to buy my way out as I normally do. Except, I miscalculated. I said too much, and the guard must have noticed some serious gaps in his memory. He lunged forward, grabbed my neck, and as I convinced myself I was going to die, I almost felt... Is it silly to feel that a single sentence would tarnish you, diary? If I write these words down, they will always be there for me to see and remember. That would not help, would it? I have no control over my thoughts, but I have control over these words, at least, so I choose not to say them to you. It doesn't matter either way, for that moment didn't last. Get your mitts off her, shouts this random one-eyed chubby doe deer, the thickest accent I've ever heard in my life, and he screams and screams at them to leave me alone. And not content with that, he climbs half the height of the bridge and falls on his head. It was adorable as it was sad, but it seems to have made enough of an impression to prompt the new guard to do the obvious right thing and take that creep to the dungeon instead of me. So I am writing today because I, I want to remember that. This anonymous act of heroism? No, that may be too great a name. Idiocy? Selflessness. Selflessness begets selflessness. That should be a proverb. Does that sound like a proverb to you, diary? I promised the boy that I would make up to him personally, but I had better steer clear of the slums for a while. I will find him, though, eventually. I trust my bad luck just fine. I'm I am still awake. Hello. Hello. Yo. Welcome to the party. Hello, hello. 
I am still awake as the thought keeps encroaching all over all the others. I just remembered how hot and bothered that idiot got when the guard accused him of being a horn eater. That is what prompted him to climb the bridge, not what happened before. Did he notice my horns at all? Just who do you think you are? Uh, what? I... Kid. What? And so we've seen this. this so, he's... Here's... What? Yeah. I, back in uh, chapter not one. It would be just... I... And what else when you're not Maxi? But... Uh, but huh? You have the, the skip button. Yeah. What? You have a you have two different kinds uh, of skip button. You can click you that. Have, I didn't know that. You have the that and the skip button up there. Ah, oh, that's helpful. You have, you have it's two different kinds of skip buttons. <laughs> uh, but yeah. What did you say? Sorry. <clears throat> Said so, buenos dias. Oh, buenos dias. Yeah, <laughs> buenos dias. <laughs> I'm so dead. I'm so, so, so dead. It's all right. I lived a good life. And I could say bye with a smile. Tell my friends I love them. And burn me with my purse for my boss figures out where all the missing rivets go. For the last time, Adder, the wine was not poisoned. Adder couldn't believe her, but then again, he could barely believe anything at this point. He'd eaten figs and dates and honeyed pastries by the dozen, sitting on cushions that felt like clouds, and he'd drunk wine so sweet that he could barely believe it was liquor. So easy to drink it was, that by the time they'd finished the first pitcher, they were already drinking from each other's mouths instead. <laughs> Oh my. And now Adder was laying on his host bed with a disheveled gazelle in one hand and a tiny ornate cup in the other. Now, don't now take that's wrong. the life. Now, I'm just saying, <laughs> a gazelle inviting a poor buck to a fancy palace, feeding him food this good and getting him all drunk? I've heard this kind of story before, ma'am. And it always ends with Barhan curses and deer turned to stone. <laughs> Dear oh, Penthoof, I didn't think it could happen to me. Sorry, go on. <laughs> Ma'am! I was talking about your skull. What were you thinking? Now I'm thinking that maybe it really is as thick as y'all say, because as much as I try, and I tried, believe me, I just can't shake the feeling this is just too good to be true. You sure you ain't about to curse me or something? <laughs> so what if I am? Hmm... What if it turns out I'm a Sefi and I put a spell on you? Isn't it a little too late to run? You know what? I think I just let you do whatever you want to me at this point. <laughs> just don't leave any mark. Ooh, bad wording. <laughs> Adder, please. <laughs> That's beyond inappropriate. Whatever happened to the shy boy I took home today? You served him wine, ma'am. He drank it, and now that he's drunk it, he's drunk. <laughs> And that really makes him feel like telling you how pretty your horns look <laughs> and how cute your fluffy little tail is and, and how much he loves your hip-shaking, earthquaking, heart-melting butt. So that's just the wine talking, hmm? Not a chance, ma'am! Addison, son of Garfot, says what he thinks all day, every day. Wine just makes him say it a little louder. Really? I'm not so sure about that. I have a feeling that you'll start looking for excuses the moment alcohol stops being one. And I'm going to take the brunt of the blame, as usual. Hey now! I may look like a crook and smell like a crook and talk like a crook, but there ain't nothing farther from the truth, ma'am. I'm a knight at heart, that and I is say a crook. I'm in everything <laughs> that I did today. <laughs> a knight, you say? <laughs> Never mind, you are drunk. Adder took both of his hands to his mouth, effectively hiding his whole face instead. You didn't hear any of that. Oh, I most certainly did. How could I forget I was dining with Sir Adder? No, Lord Adder, perhaps. <laughs> Milor Adderson of the High Field. <laughs> it's Adderson of the Upper Field. And you're the last person in the world that gets to make fun of me for wanting to be something I ain't, Sep. <laughs> At least I have the decency to call myself Jacef before and after two cups of wine. And so should you, before you slip and tell someone. Don't you worry your pretty striped face. Your secret's safe with me. 
I won't tell nobody you're a sap if you promise you won't tell them I'm a horn eater. I refuse <laughs> to make any such promises unless you can prove your aptitude for keeping the secrets you've stolen. Huh? What's that? You think I'm gonna go and spill the beans the moment you turn around? Alrighty then, I dare you to come at me with any kooky spooky mind reading magic stuff you got! My lips are sealed, ma'am! Is that so? Then brace yourself, Adder. I'm about to show you a millinery memory altering technique. A waterfall of wine fell on Adder's face. Yeah, that'll do it. Memory's missing one. That one was mining. Once I managed to get the huge goddamn mess, strike out. Ebar situ Elbar situation under control. The evening with Adder went surprisingly well. He is amusing even when he is not nervous. Provides great, if hard to follow, conversation, and it is truly a delight seeing someone eat so eagerly. Oh, I never dined with someone so hungry. Believe me, he was starved. I could almost swear he'd never eaten once in his life, so I made sure to feed him properly. Perhaps one day I shall recount the night I taught Sir Adderson to the Highfield table manners. Though, uh, I guess I should explain. It would seem this poor slum dweller is far more ambitious than I gave him credit for. He has some truly tall and deluded dreams about becoming a knight that I would just love to hear more of. Though I don't believe I am quite idle enough to follow up on the adventures of some prairie bum. Am I? I'm so dead. I'm. So hey, we skipped so fast. You guys knew uh, yep. his past shirt on. It's not often that Adder gets to take a good look at his back, much less while he's sweeping the entrance to the temple. It would seem, however, that this memory started with someone staring intently from a distance. Two people, actually. Nice rack you have there, broom boy. Oh shucks! You really think so? Oh yes, it's quite impressive. For dough! <laughs> Got him! Say what? <laughs> you want to get down here and say that to my fa- Keep your head and walk away. Huh? This is Sam. What you doing here? Saving your neck, obviously. What do you think you're doing? Elbar won't lower himself to your level, but don't doubt for a second that he will send his guards after you if you provoke him. I'm the one provoking him? Didn't you just hear what he said? Oh, please. Can't you see? He's only insulting your looks because he doesn't have anything more meaningful to say about you. He thinks you're so weak that you will crumble hearing a shallow insult. <laughs> Prove him wrong. Don't give him the satisfaction of seeing you flustered. You know what? That's... That's a for real good call. Yeah. This one of them mind-reading lessons of yours? No. That's just how life is. If you don't want to have your cute little horns thrown in the dungeon, you do well to keep your feelings in check around those that hold more power than you. And just so you know, I like them short anyway. F for real? I mean, <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> How come I hadn't thought about this earlier? <laughs> I bet he's the one feeling threatened by my horn size. You know what they say, the shorter the sticks, the longer the... Hex. <laughs> Whatever was he about to say? Oh, we well, have no idea. No idea. Man, I have... I will never know. <laughs> I have no way of knowing where that rhyme was going. What a tragedy. Mm -hmm. See, what he's actually going to say is longer licks, uh, because it turns out uh, the, the size of their tongue uh, is, is corresponding to the, inversely to the size okay, of their horns. Okay, so the that. thing is... You can't cover up a suggestive joke with another suggestive joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. Unless I do it by accident, then I can. You, 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 you kind of slip there, Jonas. <laughs> can, what? I, I'm sorry, Jonas. You, you kind of like have to try harder to, to, to kind of like cover oh. one with one. <laughs> No, that was that was Miller. <laughs> or unless you were going for leaks, like as in as in as in guitar leaks, you know.
Like maybe maybe other that springs. It was from Miller, Houston. not Jonas. Oh fuck! I cannot tell you two apart. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> like I, I I'm here's the thing. I I'm a voice director by trade, but I absolutely cannot tell voices apart. <laughs> That's, fair. that's 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 why I hire people with such fucking distinctive voices. It's because I cannot tell people's voices apart. I am so sorry. I I will I am not able to tell Stoker and Cam apart. <laughs> they sound exactly the same to me. Wait, wait, hang on, hang on. Cam and I sound exactly yes, the same. Yes, you sound like the same person to me. Well, have you ever seen us in the same room at the same time? <laughs> no. It's actually, true. no, I have not. Mm. Oh, don't start there getting questions, Elsa. Come on. Consider. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, go. indeed. Gosh. The truth come out. The void is the bat? <laughs> <laughs> no one will ever know. <laughs> the <laughs> deepest <laughs> secret. <laughs> Uh, I was having a boringly uneventful matutine walk with Elbar, watching the city at my feet as he argued with himself about some pointless troop play, when who do I spy in the distance but Adder himself, dutifully sweeping the dust in front of the Temple of Hirub. He looked adorable with that little broom between his wondrous hands. Wondrous, huh? Okay. Naturally, I could not <laughs> let this chance go. I gave Elbar some flimsy excuse to sneak away and ran to observe my favorite toy in his natural habitat before reminding him of his duties to me. That was a plan, at least. Perhaps it was the sun glistening on his body in a way I was not accustomed to, or more likely the terrible Donsoon heat demanding I stayed in the shade. It could have well been that I was far more anxious about tr uh, trying this memory than I first realized. There are so many causes I could blame, but none of them would erase the truth. I completely froze in the spot, diary. I couldn't even walk up to Adder and tease him like I usually would. As my terrible luck would have it, Elbar was so kind as to mock Adder for me all the way from the royal pathway. Now I'm fully convinced that that idiot would have run up a pillar and lost his head today if I hadn't been around to stop him from acting a fool. Does he seriously not realize how close he was to dying for real? I don't care how high a field he farmed, how high the field he farmed was back in uh, Chansuri. Chanthuri. Chanthuri. Don't worry, Chanthuri. we got it. Okay. He's a slum. He's a slum dweller now. His neck is mere dirt to be stepped on by the likes of Elbar. I don't know why I'm letting this get me so flustered. I thought his being reckless was precisely what drew me to him in the first place. Ral may have had a point, after all. I truly am letting myself get too carried away by his nonsense. Okay. Wine candlelights in the distant music traveling up from the main hall to the upper floor. Set up like no other for a romantic evening, completed by a slightly inebriated monarch and a captain of the guard leaning against each other. I will have you know, Sir Askadath, that you are exceedingly handsome. Egad! A compliment from my princess. So refreshing and so rare. I feel like the sweetest fruit on a tree has fallen straight into my hands. What have I done to deserve such unusual kindness? Oh, she does so good. I was thinking You're that the you sweetest spent so fruit many on nights the tree. <laughs> yet your hands haven't wandered even once. <laughs> But of course, I am a knight before I am a man. Love is the prize and the contest, and I know that only defeat awaits if I act too hastily. I feel mm -hmm. that it's been quite long and proper now, however, and I'm afraid my heart is not quite as strong as a trained chevalier's. I warn you, Jacif, I am known far and wide for my passion. My vigor knows no match in all of Akathor. How curious. I have heard similar things about myself. Shall we try and see who's truly the best between us? Do you truly dare? Very well, my dear. We shall burn together in the fiery pits of love. The ground will tremble with the potency of our embrace. But not today. <laughs> I have. Yeah, I was literally just about to say that. I mean, my period. <laughs> <laughs> Elvar steepled his fingers. 
I have a, a previous engagement. Next time, however, next time I will bring you the loveliest flowers and the fanciest incense, and we will have a night that will surpass your wildest maiden dreams. Until then! Uh, uh, Chandler, he didn't curl himself out of the room without maiden. any further explanation. What? It might be a little bit late for maiden dreams, yeah, but uh, go on. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly taking I'm the door away. Right. You know what? He can he can dream. Leave, leave him alone. He has his, <laughs> he has his head cannon. Okay. <laughs> nice. Ellen may think that perhaps this was an offense. That leaving your lover in the heat of the moment would be off-putting to say the least. But no, Seth remained very much unfazed. She was smirking to herself, in fact. Knock, knock. Was that Sir Askadath running through the corridor just now? <laughs> I was just testing out a theory. Theory? <laughs> oh, dear. You're a dancer, not a scholar. Leave experiments to them and focus on doing your job instead of driving the clientele. Jaseef, where do you think you're going? I need to have my research peer-reviewed. Oh, Elbar. <laughs> Who else but Elbar? Okay. Untraversable. This current wouldn't take him any further. That one was Elbar's passion. Elvar's passion. I realize today, dear diary, that the years I stopped sharing stories with you spared you from learning the most scabrous details about my love life. Given the topics we've caught up on, I assume you must have already figured out an essential fact about me. I like deer, in numbers, and on their knees, preferably. Needless to say, the feeling is mutual. It's only natural, isn't it? They can never get used to my presence. I'm always literally as overwhelming as the first time they saw me, the eternal novelty. The point I'm trying to make, boasting aside, is very simple. I know men very well. I know the coy type that thinks of laying of someone as something special. I know the anxious type with stage fright. I know the ones that think they have to feign good manners in order to get what they want. I know that Elbar isn't any of these. Oh, Elbar, my poor, confused horn eater. Were our relationship a different one, I would have been eager to explain to him that it's not precisely horns he seeks in a person. Alas, I feel no guilt in taking advantage of a stupid noble deer that could have my head with a word, and yet has so kindly offered to gild the road out of this cage I call home. I'm so very glad I decided to keep Adder around, after all. I wouldn't know where to put all the gifts I'm going to coerce out of Elbar otherwise. P.S. Eat your hat out, Geoff. You can't steal this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you think so, huh? <laughs> yeah, he's only working his magic. Uh, that's, that's some wishful thinking there, Seth. <laughs> I uh, I was gonna say, already <laughs> seen how uh, Elbar reacted to Geoff. <laughs> <laughs> okay, going back through some of these. Promising ally. That's still missing. Oh, honey, come on. You can't stay mad at your poor brother forever. Still missing. You have a red one up there. Any reason you haven't touched it? I already know where that one goes. Where did it go? That one goes out of the memory hole, but I want to stay in the memory hole and still looking for scenes. Wait, memory hole? No, it doesn't. Yeah, uh, that... Different leads to uh, don't open that door, which went out of the middle. Oh, wait. Hole. Uh, different. Mm. Still missing. Um. Just who do you think you are? All guards are bastards. That they are. <laughs> you know, I couldn't legally say all cops are bastards. <laughs> say like, what? Like, I, I am not legally allowed to say all cops are bastards in my game. Wow. I. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Spain. That's oh. very interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Wow. 
A lonely yeah. child walked the dark and narrow alleys of Ireland for the first time in her life. Rainy season left a misty fog that covered her escape, welcome assistance, or was kept slipping in wet mud, leaving a clear trail to follow. But then again, who would ever look for her? She was alone, that's why she had left, searching for something, someone, anyone who would understand. Okay, yeah, we already saw this. Yeah, if you see the, the little thing is up there, it means you have already seen it. This up here? Yeah, okay. you, you wouldn't see the skip, all that stuff. Okay, so that one also goes to, like, me. Mm. Be right back. Very well, I'll <laughs> allow it. I'm so... Mm, let's Henry's see. Missing. Um. Well, I. <sighs> yeah, you've you've read one. You keep skipping one. <laughs> I know which one it is, but uh, <laughs> you just keep opening it and not going there. <laughs> which one did I miss? Um. I can tell you, or you can, you can just go there, whatever you prefer. It's uh, other something. Oh, I didn't go down that one, this list that I have yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Dear Diary, I've brought a new deer into my room today, and you will not believe who it is. The one I chub. I found him at last. Though he is anything but chubby anymore. He actually looks kind of janky, deformed. Mm, mismatch would be a polite way to put it, I think. His name is Adder something, and as expected, he is an idiot. I made my intentions <laughs> crystal clear from the moment I saw him, and yet despite his obvious desperation, his many slips of the tongue, literal and figurative, I think there is something wrong with his jaw. He insisted on playing dumb and refused all my advances. I soon grew tired of dancing around the issue, and knowing the curse can only do, do so much, I decided to read his gaze to see if he had the right deer after all. And you know what? It turns out he is a gaze reader. Of all the deer in Akathor, this dumbass can read gazes without any proper training? Mom would have absolutely lost it. Dear Diary, I invited him over, dying to see what other surprises this elongated bag of serendipity hid, and I decided to seal the deal with a kiss and a little touch of persuasion lest he get, got cold feet. But none of that worked either. I cannot tell if my voice affected him at all. He got mad at me. I cannot care less, and my powers are useless on him, but he does not realize that I am worth a thousand times more than any miserable dough he could ever hope to lay on one of those one of those massive fingers on. Nonetheless, I need reasons to keep him close for the time being. I still have a favor to return. Do I not? P.S. Did I mention his hands? Here be blessed, his hands. <laughs> Everybody's got something. Have her shovel hands. P.S.S. We had dinner together, but I couldn't read his mind because Mass Deer arrived and I had to hide him for a while. That was nice. I'm kind of drunk. Tell you tomorrow. <laughs> dear, dear diary, I'm drunk. Good night. I, 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 I have a, like a very funny mental image of like Seth being like, 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 pissed, like you know, like like super fucking wasted. Like you just feel like oh, I have to write this right now. It's essential if hey, right hey, hey right there, now. Diary. I'm, I'm, I was having a good time with this other guy, and then these other guys came, and it was not great. But you know, I had a good time, and then oh, I'm feeling a little tipsy right now. I need to sleep this yeah. off. I'll, I'll get back to you later, you know. Like I because I, I've, I've had I've had friends in my life who will do this to me. Like they will come to me like, oh my god, I had such a good time at the party. I'm like, can you fucking go to sleep right now? <laughs> 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 okay, sorry. I had a friend many years ago who called me completely drunk out of his mind. To this day, I do not. I still don't know what he wanted to tell me while he was on the phone with me drunk, but. He kept trying to sing I'm a Little Teapot, short and stout, <laughs> but halfway through, he would switch to the Itsy Bitsy Spider, get confused about the lyrics, and then start over again to try to fix it. This happened at least four times in a row. <laughs> it was 
far too entertaining for me to make him stop. <laughs> Focus on your breathing. In. Out. Good. Don't stop. Keep your eyes on me. Like that. Relax. Now tell me, Adder, what am I thinking? You think this sounds ten kinds of wrong? Ugh, no! That's what you are thinking, damn it! Why isn't this working now? You read my gaze without even trying just a few hours um. ago. Doing it on purpose shouldn't pose a challenge after all the tips I have given you. What's your problem? Not of a pebble crashing against the balcony drained all the color from Sep's face. Elbar had finished his quest. Look, ma'am, this was a lovely night. The pastries were out of this world. You're a for real nice gal, but uh, it don't look like I'm cut out for this whole wacky, magic -y, mind reading stuff. So I think I'm gonna go and get for you. Try to yank my head hornless. That wouldn't have been normal. <laughs> that wouldn't have been normally a problem. Sep did what she could, after all. And if a pauper like him didn't want to accept her generosity, that was his problem. However, she faced a small logistics problem. There was only one discreet way to enter or exit Sep's room, the window, of course. Same window, which was being attacked with pebbles at that very moment. Needless to say, she couldn't let him go. Wait! There's something I need to tell you before you leave! Honestly, I've been meaning to ask about it since we first met, but I didn't quite know how to word the subject nicely. Say, Adder, do you have some kind of aversion to bats? Say what?! Of course I'll take baths! I, I ain't no smelly buck! It's just that I've been running all day and I work at a forge and you've been making me real nervous with this eye magic stuff and... Ah, I see. Well, don't mind me then. I'm sure that Ashen Sweat is a popular perfume among slum dwellers. I get it, I get it! Sheesh! I ain't gonna make me self-conscious about it. So you agree that you need to wash yourself, right? Perfect. Our bath is right under these stairs. It should be empty right now, so why don't you head there and hide for a while? Uh, hold up right there. Did you just say hide? F from the rest of the world. It it's like a metaphor for relaxing and... Ugh! Would you just go and stop stinking up my room already? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Adder sobbed a little. <laughs> he sneaked out of the room. <laughs> Poor Adder. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> He's oh, such Sam. a good boy. <laughs> <laughs> a deep breath was all the preparation Sep could gather before the window so, burst open. Someone said others was like a ashtray, and I haven't been able to t get out, out of my mind <laughs> since then. <laughs> <laughs> Hello again, babe! What do you think you're doing up there, you loon? I have solved your riddle, Jacif. I come bearing gifts for you, and therefore I become the opposite of a thief. And so with that misunderstanding cleared, in I go! God, his voice. <laughs> Twinge of fear sh shook Sep as the masked deer she'd grown to find absolutely predictable barged into her room. It quickly passed, however. The Desert Rose was her kingdom, her home, the only place in all of Akathor that she where she would ever be truly safe. If any guards appeared, it would be because Miss Rochelle called them, on her behalf. If anyone so much as looked at her wrong, they would be quickly disposed of, as long as Miss Rochelle approved of it. No, there was no need for that. The intruder somehow looked even sillier, yet up close. Horns aside, he wasn't much taller than the gazelle, making him look squat, in spite of his otherwise mighty and wealthy appearance. Sepp smiled to herself. Perhaps she had been looking at the situation wrong. I must admit that I am rather impressed by your guile, my masked madman. Had I known you would return to me so quickly, I would have prepared my room for the occasion. Uh, at least you could have opened a window in my absence. It smells like a volcano in here. Damn, I thought the Princess of Sand and Fire was your stage name, not your living conditions. <laughs> oh, uh, yes. That's just the smell of ash. Forge ash. Its purifying properties are astounding, but it's a bit of an uh, acquired taste. Well, whatever it is, it is extremely vexing. We will have to do something about that next time. For now, however, I didn't know what kind of present you would appreciate most, Your Majesty. So I took the liberty of bringing those that I do enjoy. Elbar removed the fabric covering his hand, only to reveal a silver plate full of pastries and a wine pitcher. We shall partake on a most lovely dinner to celebrate our first encounter. 
That's actually a fantastic idea. And yet I worry this marvelous evening may still lack the right appetizer. Hmm. Perhaps a few verses would open my appetite. Oh, just see how astute of you. Feigning disinterest and serenades deceive the feeble suitor from the truly devoted. You have pretended enough. Heed so the words of your poet. Brighter than all the stars in the sky. <laughs> warmer yet than the desert is dry. My, oh my. I thought I had been hearing voices for a while now. Step close her eyes with a small Victoria smile as the door to her room burst open. Who's there? I, this is not what it looks like. I, I can explain. I am... Sir Elbar of Askadath. Now there's a man who doesn't need an introduction. We are most honored by your presence. How did you find me? What magic have you employed to see through my disguise, old crone? <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> any business owner would do well to recognize the captain of the guard in any state of clothing. But that's not the matter at hand, is it? Of course not. We're here to talk about Princess Deceive. Beth had questions, complaints, and just about enough criteria left to not say a word when Miss Rochelle was talking on her behalf. You have exquisite taste. Jasif is such a little gem, so sadly overlooked by a deer like us just for those Barhan horns of hers. But oh joy, having you here means that her talents have finally been recognized by a worthy patron. Because you do intend to patronize her, correct? Why, yes, of course! I would never dream of wasting the time and talents of an artist like her without compensation. Oh, this is such a magnificent moment. Please, come this way. We'll make the necessary arrangements over some tea. Disregarding their yeah. difference in status, Miss Rochelle quickly pushed and dragged Elbar out of Sep's room. I like the voice drop he, he gave there on the compensation. <laughs> He's like, ah, oh, I gotta pay for this now. Crap. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever happened to a streak of bodies in the sewers? Dear. <laughs> oh, dear. Taylor could never get his hands on this one. Miss Rochelle slammed the door shut, sucking all the noise out of the room for a second. Finally, a moment of peace. For Sep, at least. Kaled, the mere mention of Erlem's most infamous moneylender's name sent invisible shivers down Adder's spine, but the realization that he was, in fact, her so-called brother paralyzes every thought. Perhaps, he hoped, it was another Taled, because if it was the same Taled, he would inevitably hear about the trial and anything revealed in it about Adder and Sep, and then someone would find a rotten hunk of yellow venison hanging from its hooves. Adder briefly considered his options before realizing that he was about to die either way. May as well have fun in its last moments. Yeah. That's the spirit. Sap seemed to agree as she quietly took a cup from a drawer and began pouring wine into it. After a few moments, the door opened once more. Quietly this time, Sap didn't need to look to know how completely soaked Adder just entered the scene. Oh boy! Soap! You know how long it's been since I last saw some good darn soap? I smell so fruity that I'm making myself hungry here. And look, my clothes are super clean now too! It sure was hard getting all the grunge out of him, but, uh, I think I managed. <coughs> <coughs> Tell me you didn't wash your rags in there. I, I uh, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I won't tell you. Sep hit her face within her hand, seeking to cease to exist for a brief moment. I just went and messed everything up again, didn't I? See? I gotta get the hay out of this place before I end up setting your room on fire or something. <coughs> No, no, it's all good. I just need a good excuse and a refill. You want one too? An excuse? You back a, casual. a cup, you moron. Adder began sniffing the cups that Seth pushed towards him. <laughs> oh, darn, check this thing out. Looks like tar juice. You drinking poison or something? Mm, it's northern mold wine. Pretty much the same thing, if you ask me. Wine? Whoa! That's the real stuff, huh? Way out of my budget. <laughs> sure hope this ain't no scam now, because there ain't no way in Doc Nah I can afford this. Uh, unless you're really taking rivets this time. Oh, please. That joke is getting old. Just relax and make yourself at home. You're my guest tonight. 
Which means that anything in this room is yours for the taking. Hint, oh, hint, yeah. hint, 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 hint. <laughs> I don't get it. Like, yeah, see, see, the, see the lamp over there? It's yours. <laughs> I will beat you over the head with this cop adder to get it into your head. A single insinuating eyebrow should have told Adder all he needed to know, but he was much too preoccupied with the pastry thing on the silver plate. <sighs> yes, Adder. anything at all. Well, guess a little sip won't hurt. Adder. That's the spirit. You're disappointing me, son. <laughs> oh, the always trick of the book. Knock, knock went the locked door, but it was completely ignored by the gazelle resting at the other side. The knocking continued at an eager tempo, specifically designed to annoy Sep into giving up, but she was far too cozy to mind. Knock, 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 Deceive! Open the door! It's me! Uh, there is no... <sighs> Deceive before the sun rises. Should I call okay. you Oma Sep Toot, then? Uh, I'd rather you didn't call me at all. Oh, come on, dear. Don't be such a bore. Today's a special occasion. I've cleared out my schedule just for you so you can tell me all about your new patron. Give me a moment. Step rolled towards the edge of her bed with a speed that wouldn't have been out of place in a snail race. She managed to gather enough momentum to just barely defeat gravity and get up. Getting dressed was important, of course, but if she was to survive a lecture so early in the morning, she needed to have a hearty glass of juice. Fermented grape juice, to be precise. As she poured her favorite tonic, an oversized pair of arms surrounded her waist, pulling her into a warm embrace. Good morning, sleepyhead. <laughs> Good... what? <laughs> the illusion of comfort was broken all too soon. What do you think you're doing? Giving you a nice good morning hug? Here! I mean, here! What are you doing in my room so late? Or so early? Or... Uh, why are you naked? <laughs> Do I have to explain that part? <laughs> oh, look, I would have well, gone sooner. You looked at me all teary-eyed when I was leaving, and then you asked me to stay, and you looked so sweet when you pulled on my hand. I just couldn't say no to that face, and... <gasps> Shut up! I did what? What's taking you so long, Deceive? Who's that talking over there? Is that your ma? No! That is none of your business, Growl! Ah, uh, don't start with that ugly business talk again. I thought you'd be in a talkative mood today of all days. Don't think I didn't see all that wine. Yes, 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 yes. Did you hear that? I was drunk. I was tired. I drank more than I thought I did. And that's why I asked you to stay. That's it. Don't get any weird ideas. Me? <laughs> nah, no. Nah. I wouldn't get my hopes up or anything. <laughs> Good. Now get out of here before she. Now hold up. Let me put something on first. Oh, nope. Oh dear. <laughs> you should have mentioned you were already celebrating. That's okay. Don't rush on my account. We'll talk later. Both Adder and Sep remained frozen for a few more seconds as they heard her walk away. <laughs> well, she seems not. Get out! Adder jumped out of the window half naked. Somewhat more naked than he was when he arrived, at least. <laughs> it was only then that no Seth noticed a shaggy piece of blue and white fabric laying on, lying on her bed. Hey! Come back here this instant! You. Whew, I just left and she's missed me already! <laughs> oh, Adder. The current has opened up oh, somewhere. Look at this tweet. Oh, actually, no, I. About chapter three. By the time I wrote chapter three, I did know the difference between tweet and twat. So that one twat was on purpose. Oh, <laughs> that was uh, that was what we call an intentional twat. Yes. <laughs> ah, the mob is back, I see. Tall bridge mm -hmm. rose from the sand, filled with guards to the brim. This memory started on poignant now, to rather a pointy one. One more step, and I'll skewer you like a. Uh, wait, wait, boy, don't. Guards became a mere distant blur as Adder jumped the railings and plunged down into the street below, carrying a gazelle with him. One awning broken, two awnings broken, fabric and rope whipped against him as they fell at full speed. Sep closed her eyes, incapable of watching the scene anymore. A million thoughts rushed through her head as they fell, and they were all about how this was not the time nor the way she wanted to go. Ah! 
No! <laughs> oh. Fall came to a sudden cushy end. For her, at least. Uh, are we not... dead? Adder could only bend his neck to check as the rest of his body was being crushed by hers. We ain't? Oh! Oh, three! We're alive! We should be dead! But we ain't! <laughs> Woo! Reinvigorated by the news, Adder grabbed Sep once more and jumped to his feet, forgetting her weight altogether. They spun round and round, the world turning into a blur as they laughed and pranced like idiots. A dozen spins later, they fell back on the ground, exhausted and far too dizzy to take another step. They found a brief respite in each other's arms, gasping for air after their manic celebration left them breathless. Sep tried counting to ten, focusing on her hooves and taking deep breaths, but nothing was getting rid of that exhilarating sensation. It was like all her baggage had flown away as they fell, and now she felt so, so very alive. Oh, gods. Why do I want to do that again? Because you're a movie. <laughs> <laughs> what was that thing you said the other day? Uh, you sure hit your head hard? Just what are you made of, Adder? I'd swear that normal deer aren't supposed to ram straight through walls, or read gazes, or survive falls like this. Who cares? All you gotta know is that Adder could do anything and more. You hear that, guards? You should have kept an eye on the one-eyed buck. Ha ha ha! And here I thought you had lost your backbone. Don't know about my backbone, but I nearly broke my tailbone because of you again. Give me back my cape, you thief! Take it off me, then. Oh, uh, oh. <laughs> Seb stretched her arms out and then laid back on the pavement. Bed eyes was a vastly insufficient term for the look she gave him as he tentatively moved a hand toward the fabric covering her shirt. What's wrong, Adder? Can't you untie a little knot? Hey! Hey now! Don't go laughing at me because I'm so, so mad at you right now! Like, whoa, whoa, so mad! Can't stop thinking about all the things you've done to me! Really? You don't sound very mad to me. Oh, yeah? Y yeah! You don't know just how mad you made me, Missy! I'm so mad, so, so, so mad, I, I could just... So help me, I could just... Adder pressed his face against Sep, getting so close that their noses touched. So mad you could just leave me hanging? So mad I could just go and do something for real dumb right now. I mean, can it be dumber than jumping off a five-story tall bridge? That depends on where you stand on asking the gazelle way out of your league to let you kiss her again after swearing you ain't a horn eater like a hundred thousand times and getting kicked out of her room in the morning, ma'am. Her position on the debate was grabbing his face softly and drawing him closer. There was nothing fancy about the kiss. It was, in fact, objectively bad and even worse to watch from the outside. Adder's previous experience in romance, or rather his lack of, had been underscored in the previous night, but it was made all the more obvious for the lack of wine to mitigate their quality standards. Hmm. <laughs> this may be the smartest thing you've done in the time I've known you. Cut me some slack here. You've only known me for like two days. A year and two days. See, now I'm gonna kiss you again just so you can't make fun of me. He was wrong. She would make fun of him for that kiss, and many of the kisses afterwards, for they were honestly worse for his involvement. After all, history has never known any such thing as a deer born good at kissing. But that could be fixed easily. <laughs> he just has to practice again and again. I'm so and again, dead. And again. I'm and so, again. so, 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 again. 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 What a terrible fate. What a terrible night to have a curse. I like when when the random faces in the, in the diary are accidentally the appropriate one <laughs> for the scene. <laughs> Dear Diary, I can hardly believe I still have the ability to write after the events that had transpired last night. I jumped off a bridge, and yes, I meant that in the most literal, least self-harming way possible. The specifics elude me now that the rush has begun to wear off, but I recall three decisive factors. I had Adder's scarf, some wine in my head, and an excess of bad intentions. 
When my attempt to dismiss him proved fruitless, I thought that I would remind him of his cowardice yesterday to embarrass him into going away, but instead I had a rather droll idea. I decided to test his courage by goading him into chasing me, running onto the royal pathway with his scarf in tow. It had much greater effect than I anticipated. He was soon pursuing me through the bridge without a trace of hesitation, screaming like the stupid idiot he is. Needless to say, half a dozen guards followed suit. We ran together for as long as my legs could bear it, and once I couldn't run anymore, he lifted me in his arms and led us to a dead end. No, I don't know why I expected anything else. Uh, the guards surrounded us, drew their spears, and began walking closer and closer like a wall of spikes. I thought this was surely our end, and I would have to haggle for my life once more, but... Ask me as you may, I cannot even begin to fathom what exactly went through Adder's mind as he watched the guards approach us. Nothing, most likely. Facing the prospect of letting himself or me, perhaps, get caught, Adder threw all sense to the wind and jumped off the railings five stories onto a nearby awning. And yet, I am still writing. We survived, we kissed, we laughed, we celebrated, and I have to confess I had not felt anything quite as exhilarating in... Never. Never before. Adder seems to have quite a talent for clinging to his life while showing a worrying disregard for it at the same time, and I want to be there to watch all the foolish things he does. Does that sound like I want to see him again? My, what a distressing thought. P.S. Those hands. Gods. <laughs> I just love that small detail every time at the end when she writes that. <laughs> she knows what she's about. Mm -hmm. I mean, to about. be fair, what, to be hey, fair, what sit, those hands so, uh, do, though? Narrative led motif. Morning after. Never mind, I had to literally kick the fixed skull boar out of a window. He forgot his red scarf thing. Uh, yeah. uh. I have to say, <laughs> it's pretty fancy looking for what it is. Perhaps I could keep it myself as payment for the many headaches he has managed to give me in just one night. <laughs> Sam, can you see, darling oh queen, I, I don't want to hurry your grace, but I think that's the sun coming up your window. You sure you don't want to go grab some scissors? Ugh, will you just shut up for a minute and let me concentrate? I'm almost done figuring out the knot. <laughs> right, right. That's great and all, but I don't think my boss is going to take I was kind of tied up for an excuse. <laughs> really, though, saw my arm off if you got it. Just don't let me get to work late. Just see if... Guess who? Oh, for the love of... Rawl! Isn't there anyone else waiting for you to ruin their morning? As a matter of fact, there is! So open up, sweetheart. I'm a very busy doe. And so is your patron. Don't think you can come and demand my time whenever you feel like it. I'm busy as well. Far too busy to open up right now. That's okay, love. I brought my keys this time. All is that. Oh, snizzle Oh, SpaghettiOs. Seb looked at Adder. Adder looked at the ropes. The ropes looked at Seb. <laughs> Down of a key struggling against the lock sent them both into a frenzy, strong enough to make Adder break free all on his own. Then it was time to panic. Seb turned the room on its head, wondering if there was a wardrobe tall enough to fit a deer that was more deer than any other deer, but she had no such luck. She had, however, an abundance of oversized cushions. The door finally opened up, revealing a doe with an apparently pleased expression, which threatened to break into ire at any moment. Miss Rochelle looked left and right, clearly hoping to find something, or someone. You can see Adder down here. <laughs> <laughs> nope. He's Quite. hidden. No? What? No. What are you talking about? That's... <laughs> <laughs> but what Wait. should he even ever be suspicious of when all Sep was doing was to sit on a pile of cushions with her cup of wine? Dear. Oh, dear. Would you look at that? Drinking so early in the morning, you look more and more like your father every day. Seb took a long sip from her drink, trying to drown the dangerously un uninhibited words that were forming in her throat. <laughs> she left the cup on the ground and sat up slightly. Where's Elbar? Didn't you say he was with you? Oh, he was! He came by yesterday while you were out. We spent a lovely evening talking about you and his doubts about my legitimacy. Someone got into his head that I have usurped the throne, and that I'm not doing enough to protect you, apparently. Uh, 
Protect what? My moral integrity? This isn't precisely a convent. You're many, many things, dear, but subtle is not one of them. I know you've struck a deal of some sort with him. But you're here because you don't know what. I'll find out soon enough. You're twenty years too young to play me, Jasif. Now, would you be so kind to tell me what kept you from opening the door this time? I was just trying to spite you. You did great then. And the one who's going to pay is that naked buck you're hiding behind the... Die, naked man! Uh, see? I'm wearing a cape! <laughs> Mr. Shaw stared at and now revealed at her for a solid minute. Then she moved her eyes towards Sep, who silently prayed for any benevolent god to end her life. Can't say I've ever understood your taste in men, Jasif, but this one definitely bears the palm. Where did you find him? In a circus? Did the wandering horn eaters come to town? Hey! I ain't... No. Adder didn't finish that sentence, for all the evidence pointed to the contrary. Well, that's okay, <laughs> sweetie. Better deer have fallen victim to Jasif's charms. Better looking at the very least. The doe walked towards Adder with a huge smile on her face. Adder walked back slowly. Smiles like those had never been good news in his life. Oh dear, what's that face for? Did she tell you something bad about me too? N no, ma'am! Never seen her do anything but sing your praises! <laughs> sing your praises, he says. How charming. Let me guess, you're one of those naive country fawns that get corrupted by the glamour of the city and then never dare go back home. Just think what your parents would say if they saw you here. For a moment, Miss Rochelle's eyelids drooped a little. For a moment, her words sounded a bit, little bit too honest. Well, dear, if that's the case, you're far too good to die because of someone like her. That's why I'll be nice and give you a chance to turn your life back around. You have five seconds to run before I call the guards. One. W will you be all right? Zep just pointed at the window, her face still covered with one hand. Two. In the count of three, Adder disappeared. Well, he seemed like a nice enough sort. I bet you would have broken his heart one way or another. Wait a second, I don't get it. Why was Adder tied? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, you sweet oh, summer child. <laughs> Baby. He, he fell and got all tingled up while they were knitting. That's it. <laughs> oh, Adder. That kind of stuff happens to me a lot, too, you know? I certainly <laughs> hope not. Um. <laughs> <clears throat> Moving right along. <laughs> oh, <my. laughs> I'm going to push him off a cliff. Quietude. <laughs> just complete, utter oh, silence. God, heavy. Very heavy. About as thick as a sheet, covering the entirety <laughs> of Sep's room. Silence from the girl meticulously moving a flattened bead of glass over every squiggly line of letters in a book. Silence from the boy sitting by her side on the bed. Hands intertwined over his caved-in stomach as he stared at the ceiling. <clears throat> his little drumming or his occasional whistling vanished in all the encompassing silence. I'm sorry, I thought you'd like that. I didn't. Sep licked her thumb before turning the page. Felt like the slowest page turn in history. Did I make you mad? Not at all. I appreciate your initiative. Adder's gaze traveled to the other end of the room, repelled by the tone of her words. He barely dared look at her ears. Uh, you look mad. I have been known to look mad on occasion. Having two people that could read minds together in a single room, avoiding each other's gaze was foreboding to say the least. Well, as long as you ain't mad. The sound of the book being sternly closed echoed all over the room. I thought you'd be smart enough to figure out how I feel, if only barely. So you are mad! <laughs> of course I'm mad! How could I not be? You've been taking too many liberties lately, but this is the last straw. How dare you go behind my back like that after all I've done for you? Ah, oh, the nerve you have! 
On my nerves is where you're getting. I already apologized. What else do you want me to do? You call that an apology? You haven't even started to grovel. Say what? You really think I'm going to bow my head and kiss your hooves? I done begged plenty in my life, but even I got some pride, ma'am. Adderson, son of Garefather, the upper field is a whole lot of things, but he ain't no ass kisser. And what exactly is Adderson of the upper field if not an ass kisser taking advantage of my generosity? I have little use for anything else. Adder I just want to say sorry. <laughs> Can you... I just want to say, like, the size of his chest compared to the size of hers <laughs> is really funny to me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> that is completely uh, Everybody fair. has their thing. <laughs> no, no. Like, uh, uh, there, there, there's, there's a joke coming up about the size of others' chest. <laughs> <laughs> Adder extended a finger, posed a reply, but he immediately curled it back as he pressed his lips together, realizing his own urgent lack of a worthwhile retort. <sighs> you know what? Fine. Guess I can't keep my true identity a secret forever. The seriousness of his expression managed to throw Sep off ever so slightly. You want to know who I am? Well, listen up and listen well. I'm a knight to be. Royal blood runs in my veins because I was abandoned in a farm in the middle of nowhere by my real parents. Only after coming of age did I find out I was, in fact, a hero destined to save all of Akazor, nay, all of Dakna, from ruin. Good Akazor there, not Akathor. Yeah, it's sometimes it's the, sometimes it's the. And the one get the girl while at it. Adder struck a pose as he finished talking. He huffed through his nose and then discreetly turned his head to see Sep's reaction. <laughs> You're lucky. I have a soft spot for your lies, Adder. I'm going to give you extra credit for having such a knightly name. Now, tell me a better one. Say what? <laughs> Ma'am, coming up with stories like these ain't nothing to sneeze at. I'll just tell you another tomorrow. <laughs> Bold of you to assume you will have a tomorrow with me. Step opened the window and folded her arms, looking rather serious. I've been a gracious host so far, but my time is precious and short, and you have far overextended your stay beyond what's acceptable. If you're not going to do what I say, then I don't have anything else to say to you. You have taken me for granted long enough, Adder. Well, nothing to do about it then. Ah, uh, darn my luck. <laughs> Guess you won't get to hear about all my... All my mighty made-up master plans to become a knight and get you to fall for me. <laughs> Curses. They were so funny, too. Like that one time <laughs> I disguised myself as ten stags trying to fight me and ended up getting knocked out by my boss. Or that time I hid inside a barrel and convinced a guard I was a talking barrel of ale. <laughs> and don't even get me started on the neck thing. Steph hesitated for a moment as she watched him climb down. Fine. Let's make this a game, then. Come back tomorrow with another story of yours. If you manage to make me laugh at least once, I will let you stay by my side one more day. If you don't, I will make you pay the extent of my services in full. Can I pay in rivets this time? <laughs> Tap slam the window shut. And then Iligra grabbed me by the neck and I heard this loud friggin' crack. And suddenly, I could do this. <laughs> Adder twisted the upper half of his neck and then tilted it some impressive 60 degrees to the side. <laughs> stop! Stop! Oh, that's too yeah. gross! <laughs> so anyway, Megan's been going a little better since that happened. <laughs> Adder took a date and popped into his mouth, chewing loudly. You know, every time you tell me about your life, I try to think about it, but... I just can't imagine what being so hungry that you have to beg must feel like. I mean, I understand the concept, of course. I just can't wrap my head around the idea of not having food. Funny you'd mention that. I've been thinking hard too lately, and I, I realize that you're, uh, you're really big for a gazelle, and... And you're really perceptive for a row. Darn it, I wasn't done talking! 
I was going to say that I'm always here drinking with you and cramming food down my throat, but I ain't never seen you take one bite. <laughs> of course not. That wouldn't be proper of me. What do you mean, proper? Barhan Protocol says that a gracious host should not eat in front of a guest. Your wealth belongs to those that don't yet trust you, and your trust belongs only to those that would share their wealth back. I can't eat in front of you. You're not my equal. Say what? Come on, you know that if I got a biscuit, a half would be yours. I, I can't exactly bring you a fruit salad, but I could try and smuggle out some taters <laughs> from the forge or something next time. I don't know what a tater is, but oh, I can I wouldn't Sorry. Touch one with a stick. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your food, Adder. I don't want it. So you're saying you don't trust me? I am, yes, but that's not the... No, that's... That's all right, ma'am. You don't gotta explain. I get it. I ain't done nothing to deserve that or any of this, really. Guess you were right when you said I've been taking you for granted. Mr. Bard always says no one's kind without a reason. And you've been so awfully nice to me, I forgot to ask yours. I have told you a thousand times, haven't I? I'm just returning the favor. But I didn't do you no favor! I just hollered in your general direction and then fell on my face and gave myself a big bump in the head. I couldn't do nothing to protect you. If that guard hadn't gone and helped you, you... That placed her finger on Adder's lip, silencing him. Your intervention was as endearing as it was futile, but that does not change what you did. You charged in headfirst, risking your own life to stand up for someone you'd never even met before. I don't think you can fathom how rare that sort of heroism is in this city, Adder. Steph's index finger floated briefly on the air before landing on Adder's nose. You're right in one thing, however. I'm not as selfless as you are. I did have ulterior motives for returning the favor. Though nothing nearly as nefarious as you're making it sound, I assure you. Steph's gaze was drawn to her mirror. When I mentioned what happened, you think of one night one year ago, but what I think of is one year of nights wondering if you had seen me that night, if you had noticed the horns on my head, if you only stood up for me because you hadn't. Sep, I know my folks ain't exactly kind to yours, but... No, you know nothing at all. I swear I... You what? You would positively, absolutely do the same for anyone? I can't believe you, Adder. You lie as you breathe. How could I possibly believe a single thing you've said to me? That's why I won't rest easy until I can get inside your head and find out myself. Then, that's it? That's the whole reason you've been so good to me? What do we do when we get your answers? There's nothing else I could possibly want from you. But, I... Can't deny that your stories have been as entertaining as you promised they be. Yep. That's Adderson for you. Real entertaining buck. Adder tried to smile, but his brow didn't listen to him. His eyes refused to meet Sep's anymore. To his surprise, <laughs> Sep grabbed a pastry and shoved it in her mouth. For some of means, and I'm not willing to give you a vote of confidence while I reach my own conclusions. <laughs> a dumb, affectionate smile crept onto Adder's face as he watched her chew away whatever pretensions of dignity she had left. You're sweeter than stolen honey, you know that? Sh shut up and pass me those pastries. Absolutely, ma'am. Open wide. Here comes the caravan. Woo! Uh, hey, hold up. We're supposed to share. Don't just eat all of them. Sap! <laughs> nope. They're mine. Ah, so it's past midnight. It is. Oh, so it is. <laughs> ah, even Adder's sad. <laughs> it's true. You can always uh, right-click and save at any point, so don't worry. Uh -huh. I'm trying to figure out what the thread here is, so... Oh, you have bunches of episodes there. So the morning Did after... you say episodes? Because that's what I heard. That's what I choose to have heard. <laughs> Stop doing Sep, what you Sep can get up here.
So you say episodes, and now all my mind can think of is like the camera zooming in on her, and there's like a, a credit underneath her face, and it freezes, and there's like a laugh track in the background. <laughs> <clears throat> It's like the uh, the too many yeah. cooks. Oh god! Video. I think it's nice. too yeah. many cooks, too many cooks, too many cooks, too many cooks. Bargain. Assuming those go in order. Yeah, you went tangled up. Uh, deserve and bargain, I think. No, tangled up, bargain, deserve, yeah. Okay. Alright. Here we go. Okay. Yeah, this part takes a while. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Chapter Never 3 is so long. Steph's head's big. We got lots of it, stuff It's to not read. long, it's more substantial. <laughs> you know, like Steph's, uh... <clears throat> anyway. <laughs> um, Earthquake have... in... Heart... <laughs> Heart melting. melting. Uh, <laughs> keep shaking. Keep shaking. Yeah. Yeah, curious. Yeah. 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 Yes, yes, yes. All right. Um, but yes, thank everyone. you so much again for coming out, Maxi. Thanks, everyone in Rue Crew, for coming out again. Yeah. Yes. Thanks, all you in the audience. Drive safe. Um, we'll, uh, we'll catch you next time. So many things I wanted to talk to you about, Maxi, about like talking shop and stuff, but maybe some other time. Yeah, don't worry. I'll be around. I, I'm in Sobniak. I'll be, I'll be around probably next time, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I relate to that. Yeah. Uh, All right. All right. See you now. Enjoy your okay. morning, and everybody else enjoy your night. Yeah. Good everybody. Yeah. Good everybody. Night. Good everyone.